Hey there, this should be the last video in our little mini-series on um, going back over the Monte Carlo uh, methods and sparse matrices and linear systems. Um, in the original sparse matrix uh, for the Monte Carlo, we did a video where we looked at calculating the probability of making 50% of a max profit on an option uh, trade. And we used the matrix methods we had developed in the previous video, and I just briefly talked through using this schematic here of how we built that system, and there were some questions on that. So what I want to do now is go through that in more depth, and um, this video should be, actually be a lot quicker than the last two, so hopefully um, we can knock this off quickly. Uh, especially since we've covered uh, the majority of the groundwork here. So I'm going to close this window and the notebook that I'm going to use is the one that we did for um, the previous video where we went through um, the Monte Carlo, um, the linear systems for the Monte Carlo uh, simulation. So um, let's get started. Okay, so I'm recording this little part uh, right after I had finished the coding section. Uh, I'm not really thrilled about the way this came out. There's an awful lot of bookkeeping involved here, and uh, you know it ends up like number of days times number of simulations plus four minus two plus A plus B, and it just becomes kind of um, unwieldy. Um, I don't like to script things out. I prefer to do it real time. Um, at least when I see things done in real time, I get more benefit out of it. But this one's kind of complicated uh, in terms of that bookkeeping again. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do the notebook a lot more detailed than I normally do before uh, uploading it. Uh, so if you want a, a real breakdown of, of how the indexing is done, just go, go to the notebook. So now back to the video. So the last time we talked about this, we just did a simulation for one stock run. So I want to expand that and do a whole series, like thousands of runs that we can use in a Monte Carlo type simulation. And just as before, uh, where did I do it um, with the loops here? and then I did it with the matrix method. I'm going to do the same thing, um, build the simulation with a loop, build the simulation with the matrix uh, techniques, show that they're equivalent, and look at the performance difference between the two. So let's uh, actually get started. So let's zoom in a little bit, and I am going to look at just putting a break in here for my own uh, notes. Let's call this, I don't know, let's call this um, multiple simulations and then we'll start uh, with the loop. So the first thing I'm going to do is just uh, reset our random seed and put in all of our start values. For the time being I'm just going to do 10, 10 simulations, 10 runs of the uh, Monte Carlo technique. Um, just as before I'm going to have n days equal to 5 and um, yes and I have to rerun all the cells here. Okay. And just as a reminder, um, this is the equation we're iterating over. And since this is pretty easy, I'm just going to blow through this pretty quick and spend the most of the time on the matrix uh, matrix methods. So I'm going to create an empty list to store our uh, multiple simulations in. I know it's not the most efficient thing to do, but oh well. So now uh, for I in range and sims. Uh, we always need to reset our stock price back to 100 at the beginning. Uh, and I'm going to define another empty list S to hold the, eat the result of each uh, simulation run. Uh, yes, and now we need to calculate our epsilons. Okay, so these are our epsilons, and uh, which may seem kind of random at first, is I added an additional day to this, and I'm going to delete the, the first element of the array, the zeroth element. So I'm going to do an epsilon is equal to uh, np.delete epsilon, and I'm going to delete the zeroth element. And the reason for this uh, is not going to be obvious until we get to our matrix section, so I'm going to just do it here and then I'll come back to it when we actually build the uh, build our matrix type uh, simulations. So I'm going to calculate what we call the lambda values. That's just basically this term here. And before I forget, I should um, append our initial stock price S0 uh, to 
our uh, S array. And now we're ready to actually do the final loops. So I'm going to do for J in range 1, comma, and days. Actually, we don't need the 1 here, do we? So end days. Let me scroll down here. Uh, here's our iteration step. And now we just take our S uh, array and append S0 to that. And that should be that for this uh, portion. So I think I'm going to convert that S into a NumPy array. So an MP to array S. And I'm going to append uh, data.append S. Does this run? Uh, for J in range, data.append S. Okay, fixed. Um, and I also added in this for loop that loops over our data set and plots, plots each run. So we, here we go. Here are our 10 simulations. So that's straightforward. Uh, let's move on now to the uh, matrix version. Okay, so for a new cell, we're going to need a lot of the same information we had before. Um, uh, we set the we set the random seeds, set the number of simulations, stock price, and all that stuff. So okay, let us actually move on here. So um, where's our original matrix equation here? How might we generalize this to handle multiple simulations? Like each of these blocks is one simulation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and write out the equivalent code for two, uh, two simulations. And the reason I'm only writing two rather than the, the 10 that we're going to do here is just the matrix would be too big to fit on the screen. Already it is too big to fit on the screen. So this is what we have here. Oh, and before moving on, I should also say, uh, where do I put that matrix? There it is. <clears throat> Let me shrink this down again. Um, this matrix product is equal to this. This is analogous to this situation here where we have the first element of this column vector be the initial stock price and all zeros. The difference down here is for each block, so for each one of these uh, individual runs essentially, uh, you have that type of situation. So you have the initial price uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, the initial price again, 0, 0, and if this were to continue on, this pattern would repeat itself. So now let's actually come down here and code up the matrix. So just as before, um, we're going to create a vector of 1s. However, this time, uh, it has to be equal to the, the proper dimension. So it's the number of days times the number of simulations. And then since we're adding on the initial zeroth day, if you want to call it that, we have to add on another n days. We're popping off the uh, first element of that vector again, and then we're building our lambda. So let's just run this to make sure there are no typos. And of course, there are some issues. N, oh, it's a lowercase d in days. Okay, so that's that. Let us build our vector of ones now. Well, actually, let's adjust our lambda vector first. I mean, before building the ones, uh, we need to set every sixth, or in this case, six, every n days plus one element to minus one. Because when we build this matrix, we build the actual vector we send into the array, it's going to be lambda plus one. And since we need this element here, for example, to be zero, uh, we need to set this element equal to uh, minus one so that it cancels out. It's a roundabout way. I probably should have come up with a cleaner way of doing it. Just building this entire lambda plus one vector from the outgo uh, from the from the beginning and then setting it to zero. But I, I did it this way. So sorry if it's confusing. I will try to document it uh, when I uh, put this up online. So now let's build our vector of ones. MP dot ones. Uh, this has to be a minus. So the size is this. This is n days, not n's. Let's make sure it runs. Oh, it's always something. Okay. And now we need to reset um, 
every n plus one uh, uh, days back to back to one, and this picks off that initial stock price of each different each different run of the simulation. Okay, now we're ready to actually build our matrix. So it's going to be equal to diags. Our diagonals are going to be uh, lambda plus one and our ones vector. The position of those is going to be minus one and zero. And as above, we're going to set the format equal to CSC. Does it run? Yes, it does. Uh, we're good, almost good to go. We need to create our vector of knowns. So let's call that vector capital Y as we did above here. It's going to be equal to MP dot zeros. And the size of it is going to be the same as this diagonal here. So let me just copy that. And now we have to set up the initial stock price part of this. So from the beginning to the last element, every n days plus one gets set to S0, and it's zero otherwise. So let's make sure, or, okay, what's the issue? There we go. Now we're actually ready to solve it. So, SP solve, let's uh, call this vector X. It's equal to sp solve m comma capital y or is it lin sp solve cool so let me just reshape this for plotting convenience uh, does it run no it doesn't of course okay so now we should just be able to iterate all, over all the uh, rows of that and plot them. So for i in range and sims plt dot plot x i comma all columns. Oh damn it. And that's the second time today I've done that for I in range. So there we go. Let's see. Does it look the same as this one? Does to me. Okay, so that's it. Um, as I said uh, in the piece I stuck, I stuck into the beginning of the video, uh, I'm going to do a lot of, of, of uh, detailing of the indexing in the notebook that uh, eventually gets put onto GitHub. So, um, yeah, until then, uh, well, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. And until then, until later, I will uh, see you.